Hello and welcome to another teacher tech video here. Uh, this is Brian and let's get straight into it. So in the last video I showed you guys how to attach a Google Doc to both an email and into a Google Classroom. And at the time Schoology was down so it gave me some time to figure out how to set up and how I actually wanted to do this. So I actually think this is beneficial because now we get a whole video just on Schoology. So, um, how to set this up in Schoology, I have an example classroom set up here right now. Um, this is the free version of it currently, so if you were to set this up, you could actually use this as part of your classroom currently. If you want to go learn how to do that, you go to Schoology.com and it'll set you up through the process of how to set up your own class. So um, first couple things here that people don't know about is the things that we're going to be using are actually apps that you have to download in Schoology's App Store. So up here you have this little four square icon. If you click on it, it'll tell you you currently don't have any apps installed. So we're going to go to the App Center. So once we're in the App Center, we're looking for two main things. The key one being Google Drive, which is going to be a resource app. In Google Drive assignments. So I'm going to go in here and install resource app. Obviously we have to agree because we don't really have any other choice. And you will install the resource app just like that it has been installed. So now if we go back to the App Center, we can now go to Google Drive assignments and install our Google Drive assignments. Now, right here, as it starts to proc, it's going to ask you what courses. So if you have a bunch of different classes that you teach or your school has purchased the paid version of Schoology, you might have a lot more laid out options for you. So uh, you'll actually have to box off each one of these and you will want to only allow course admins to have access to the assignments or you can give it to students. So we're going to go ahead and install. All right, so now this has been installed, we can go back to Courses and go to our course. And now if we go to Add Materials, we can actually click on Add Assignment. Now, if you've done it correctly, you'll see this right here where it says Assign From App, and you'll see Google Drive Assignment. Now, it's going to proc you here into wanting to sign in to your Google Drive, which makes sense because we haven't signed in yet. So we have Teacher Tech, Google Drive being logged in, going to Allow, and now our entire Google Drive is here to see. <clears throat> so what we want to do then is click on the digital version of this for our genetics plus squares that we've made previously, or whatever the assignment may be, and we're going to attach it to this assignment. Now up here we get to name it. So I'm going to name this genetics on it. Squares. You can add a description here if you'd like. Once again, this is just an example class, so I'm not going to. Um, for the due dates, you actually can add a calendar due date in here for your students. And if you have any idea how many points it's going to be worth, you can, it always will auto-generate to 100, so you can make it 10, whatever you want. If you want to link your grading book, if you have something like Infinite Campus or something, this will be another video that I'll talk about how to link your grading book to Schoology to let them sync and talk to one another. But for right now, I'm going to leave that blank. Or, as you can see, it says no grading period because also with this being a free course, I'm not enrolled in a school semester's course. And you can hit create. Now you've created a genetics Punnett square in Schoology that is live for your students to see. So if you click on this assignment right here, you'll see that this is the assignment. Now this is the teacher version. The students don't get to see this. So if you click on this, it will actually take you to your Google Drive setup that where we've had with the document. Now this was the half made example that I've linked from when we were working on previously. So, you know, like this is a good way to test it, right? This isn't the one we want. So let's say we want to go in and edit it. So we go back. Now we're gonna click on the gear and hit edit. Now, 
there's a couple ways to do this. Once you've already had it set up, it's very hard to get this detached. It's almost easier to just go in and delete and start your process over. So for those who've been following along, this will be a brief moment just for me to reshow you how this works. Now I shared this document with myself from my other Google Drive, so it's gonna be in my shared with me column. And I know it's this one because previously checked, but you can always click the view button before you go through just to make sure that you have the right one selected. So yes, this is the correct one. I'm gonna click this one and click attach. Now that is correct. I will change this to genetic Punnett squares and we can hit create. Now, if you don't fill in your grading category, it needs to be ungraded or else you're gonna get this category field error, which is fine. It doesn't affect anything and you hit create. All right, now it's there. So if you click this, now let's say you have assigned this to a student in your first period class and they're trying to work on it and they're like, well, number five doesn't make sense. Well, you can actually go in to your original document, which is what this area is. For the assignment, this is your copy, the teacher copy. And you can actually go in and make changes. Now, it won't affect any of the students in that like first period or one, two class that you've made because they've already made a copy of this document. But for the rest of your days and classes and in the future, it'll be already pre-made for you. So that's done in here, done right there. So if you click in progress, right now it's going to show that there aren't any assignments here right now, but if you had some, there would be a list of students here on the left that would show who has started, who has not been in progress, and Following that, you would be able to filter your submissions by who's turned it in right here. So this is a great way to monitor because it generates everything for you in Schoology. So you can look at each independent student. Now the other interesting fact about all of this, if you let me clear these real quick, we can actually get a Schoology folder designed for us in our Schoology. So if you go to the shared with me, or I'm sorry, my drive, and click on Schoology Google Drive. Now, nothing's going to appear here for me because my students haven't made it yet, but if you type in Schoology Google Drive assignments, it will actually appear as a folder for you and it'll actually house all of your student work. For those of you who have a co-teacher and you guys are both working in that same classroom, this would be a great idea to actually share that folder with your co-teacher. That way both of you can view the student work happening in that folder. That way also one of you can assign the document or the other one can assign the documents and you'll both be able to see it. Now, the first time the other co-teacher makes an assignment, it's going to generate that folder as well in their Google Drive. So both co-teachers will have to share their separate Schoology Drive folders with one another to get it all to work. A um, couple other things that I guess I could add to this that I'm thinking about now is the ability to take this assignment and have your students automatically open this and it's automatically shared with you and it automatically puts their name on their paper. I could tell you how helpful this has been with trying to find student work because let me tell you something, there's nothing worse than having a student complete their work and turn it in but you have no idea who completed it. So. Once again, this has been Teacher Tech. I've been Brian, and thank you for your attention, and I hope this helped. So once again, if you have any other questions, comments, or ideas that you'd like to try or you'd like me to demo or take a walkthrough as well, let me know, and I will be more than happy to try and figure it out for us. Thanks, and have a great day.